Maximize Your Influence is your podcast for the latest persuasion, sales, and negotiation techniques. Our mission is to help you influence on command, anyone, anytime, anywhere. Your host is the author of Persuasion IQ, Laws of Charisma, and the best-selling book, Maximum Influence. Now, your host, Kurt Mortensen. Howdy ho, and welcome to Maximize Your Influence. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Kurt Morrison here. This, of course, is Maximize Your Influence, where you're going to learn how to maximize your influence, your persuasion, negotiation, your mindset, your people skills, your emotional intelligence, set it before what we should have learned in school. That's my passion. Get it out there. Let's learn the skills that make the big difference, not only for our happiness, our relationships, but for our income and our success. It's there. Spread the word. Tell your family, friends, and enemies about the podcast. It's on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, and iHeartRadio, all under Maximize Your Influence. So we're going to talk about today some of those annoying things that you're saying. I'll put money on. One of the things I'm going to be talking about today is in your vocabulary, which rubs people the wrong way, which causes them not to like you. A bad subconscious trigger just doesn't feel right, and it's just programmed in our brain. The salesperson says, oh yeah, trust me. Oh, I wasn't supposed to trust you before. Well, honestly speaking, well, you weren't honest before. <laughs> we see him all the time. He's like, did you really say that? Okay, they did. And we're going to address that. So I do appreciate the feedback. You can send me an email anytime at Kurt at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. And remember, we use your email on the show. You get the free version of InfluenceUniversity.com. Or if you already have one, we're going to upgrade you to the next level, the gold version of InfluenceUniversity.com. Check it out. Persuasion tool a day. Very simple. Everything you want in life is on the other side of persuasion. So I've been in town. It's been kind of nice last couple of weeks. Been working with some nonprofit organizations, help building them up, getting them more influential. It's all about the good cause. Been working on that new book. <laughs> Yeah, I laugh because it's always slower than you want, especially this one. This is my fourth one, and it's probably been the slowest. It's interesting. The first one, well, the first one was relatively slow. I put a lot of research. I mean, thousands of studies in that one. Second one's faster. Third one was even faster than that. But this fourth one was like, <laughs> I can't tell you why. But it's been always been put on the back burner, maybe because I'm just busy and it hasn't been put as a top priority. But teach some college courses, got to get those college kids in on the soft skills, that emotional intelligence, and then I'm off to Indiana this week to teach a high-level group on the power advanced negotiation, not the basic stuff. We're talking the high-end power and negotiation skills and their dirty deeds. Not to use those dirty tricks, but just be aware when they're played on you. So let's get into our geeky Scarly article. Now, this is the annoying things people say. Now, I hesitate. I'm going to get beat up for this one. I know it's probably not true, but this is from Reddit. <laughs> so this is probably not up the same level as Journal of Psychology or Marketing or uh, fill the blank. There's a journal for everything. But I'm going to use it anyway. Have fun with it. It was compiled by a poll to Reddit users as far as one of those top annoying remarks that are people using. They have 75. I'll put a link at MaximizeYourInfluence.com if you want to check out all of them. It hit the social media and some of the news networks pretty hard, so that's kind of interesting that this is clickbaitish, I guess, where what are some of those annoying things that are being said? Now, again, not all 75. Let's go over a few and what I think. <laughs> and again, it's Reddit, not quite the geeky Scarly article, but we're going to use it. We're going to go with it because they're going to do the poll. Now, a poll, a Reddit poll. Well, that's a challenge with polls right now, even like political polls. You call someone's house, they don't answer. And the person that answers, or the people that answer, they're not probably the same demographic of the people who aren't answering. So it's kind of tough to see. Not exact science, but you know, I agree with a lot of these, especially if you've read Maxim Influence, one of the 12 laws of persuasion, verbal packaging. This would be bad verbal packaging. You're triggering the wrong emotion, the wrong subconscious trigger. Looks like they did over 12,000 votes, 11,000 comments. Let's see what they have to say here. Here's the first one. I didn't mean to be rude, but... Okay. The challenge there is... I mean, the word rude, unless that person has said it, but the key is the word but. 
As you know, the word butt negates everything in front of it means you don't believe that. You look great tonight, dear butt. I sure love your company, butt. <laughs> You're the greatest person in the world, butt. So you have to be very careful of just the word butt because it will negate everything. So it's basically saying, I didn't care as rude and here it comes. Oh, here's a fun one. Well, it's common sense. Basically saying, yeah, you're stupid. I'm smarter than you, which for most people is a bruise to the esteem. And as we know, when you bruise the self-esteem, it closes the doors to influence. And of course, when you enhance it, it opens it up. This is what I harp on, especially these going through the perfect persuasive presentation. This is where you have the course, but I'm also watching your videos coaching you. I've seen over 10,000 presentations. This is a big one. It's the word, you know, you know, you know, um, er, uh, you like, you know, dude, every culture has them. It's like a knife stab in you. It's not very credible. You know, you know, you know, and it's crazy that most people have no idea how many they're using or if they're using them. And when I come back and said, yeah, 112, they're like, what? <laughs> in fact, I teach public speaking at a local university and I've put in a petition to get electric shock plate to shock the student every time they use, um, or, you know. For some reason, they just will not okay that request. Explain that one to me, but I bet you would fix it really fast. That is a big one with corporate executive CEOs. We get rid of those fillers. You don't get rid of all of them, but most of them, so you're not that annoying person because it just drives people crazy, and I'll put money on you are using it. How about this one? I simply have a powerful personality. Okay, what's powerful mean? I don't know, for me, it seems arrogant. Well, I'm powerful. This is my personality, and you have to deal with it. I'm going to get my way. <laughs> I, nobody wants an excuse of why you're being rude, mean, inconsiderate, arrogant, whatever it is. That one's medium on the list, probably, but probably something you want to take out of your vocabulary. This one, I'm a little mixed on this one. Well, I agree to disagree. Okay, good for you. What, have you given up? I mean... If you're at a standstill and you're about ready to hit each other and you need a break, maybe. If you need some time to do some research and think it through. But if you're there to solve a problem, a challenge, a negotiation, that's not a good time to say it. It just means you've given up. I, I don't know what to do next. And that's a problem with most negotiations. If people come with their one or two ideas, it didn't work out, the other side didn't like it. And what's the Chinese proverb says that the person that strikes first admits their ideas have given out. And so they get emotional and they get angry. They start calling names. I remember going to a negotiation once and multimillionaires, real estate, very educated people. But that blood leaves the brain. People get emotional. You run out of solutions. And this one guy said, well, I make more money than you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my dad can beat up your dad. This is kind of what was said in elementary school. That's what happens when people run out of ideas. How about this one? Well, that's problematic. What's that saying that you're a problem? <laughs> that's one of those words that you have to verbally package. What's your objection? Hey, what's your challenge here? Do you have an issue? Soften it up a little bit. Could be very helpful here. No offense, but <laughs> okay. Buckle up. They're going to let you have it. There's the butts. They don't care if they offend you. Their butts right there. That's like when a dentist says, yeah, you're going to feel a little pressure. That's another time. All right, hold on. It's coming. The pain is going to come. Now, it's good verbal packaging, but we've heard it so many times. We know it's coming. How about this one? Well, it's just a joke. Man, we're kind of backpedaling here. Someone got offended. Was it? <laughs> uh, you know, now that everything's offensive, you got to be careful. So let me add to that, too. Well, you shouldn't be upset. You shouldn't be offended. That shouldn't have bothered you. Well, it did. It's like telling your kids, well, you shouldn't be depressed. You shouldn't be angry. They're like, well, I am. Well, you should be afraid of flying. They're like, I am. So that has never helped. Or this one. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Has that ever worked? I think it would be instant resistance. I, I don't care who you are. <laughs> Now, if I found out you were CEO of my company or someone that's really important that could help me out, that I needed to respect, maybe, but you might get a little fake respect, but still, do you know who I am in that tone? Ah, careful, but maybe. Can't you see I'm busy? Well, no, that's why I knocked on your door. <laughs> well, no, that's why I called you. I can't see through the phone line. I think the other challenge with that, too, is everyone's busy. Everyone pretends to be busy, and they're not saying, oh, well, I'm not busy, and you are. So careful of that one. Well, actually, 
<laughs> basically saying, uh, you're wrong. There's almost a button there. No, you're completely wrong. I'm 100% correct. You have no idea what you're talking about. That could trigger a little resistance. Smile. Well, as an owner of RBF on my face, <laughs> maybe that's good advice sometimes. It's how you take it. Depends on the situation. So that's probably a medium one. How about this one? You've heard this one probably from Aunt Edna, a member of your family. I'm always going to keep it real, and a lot of people cannot handle the truth I speak. Okay. <laughs> that's basically saying, hold on, I'm going to offend you. My ideas are better than yours. And the last part of that sentence, the truth I speak, so everything they speak is the truth. They have a license on all truth that all their beliefs are 100% correct. Woo, arrogant, careful. That could be a challenge. And some of these are just instinct. Well, honestly, again, that's just a knee jerk for a lot of people. They're not even thinking, oh, wow, that could be bad. So a lot of these are just in our vocabulary because we've heard them before that we just automatically use. They don't necessarily mean how they're coming across, but that's how they're coming across. Here's the deal. Uh, all right, basically, my way or the highway. <laughs> Could be good in a negotiation if you're hitting a brick wall and you're getting to see if you're getting ready to walk, maybe. One we've talked about when we get into EQ and anger, this one, which makes it worse, you know, you should calm down. <laughs> yeah, calm down. Basically saying you're out of control. Why don't you calm down? I've never really seen that calm somebody down. Or let me add to that too. It's not on the list, but because those are the rules, that's our policy. Things like that don't usually help. Well, if I were you, all right, buckle up, unsolicited opinion coming. <laughs> They're going to give you advice whether you want it or not, which could cause a resistance. A lot of people don't want to be told to do. They don't want unsolicited advice. They don't want advice in general. That's why here... At Maximize Your Influence, we teach you to help people persuade themselves instead of telling them what to do. <laughs> I had a good chuckle on this one. Are we there yet? Or my favorite one as a kid was, if we turn around right now, are we more closer to home <laughs> or a destination? So as a kid, probably not a big deal as a parent that can drive you crazy. Or speaking of parents, because I said so, because I'm the mom, I'm the dad, I'm the parent. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of resistance. A lot of resistance there. I think you already get that one. This goes back to the joke one. Well, it's just, it's just a joke. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm just playing with you. I've used that before. I have learned through life that some personalities just don't handle teasing very well. I come from a family of teasers. We tease in our family. But I have noticed with exchange students that some cultures just don't get the teasing, the sarcasm. So that could be a function of the personality. Did you bruise their esteem? Do they get it? You're just playing. Was it really a joke? Or are they taking it personally? And I have noticed that specifically with personality and culture. Well, everything happens for a reason. You know, that may be true, depending how you look at the world. But, but when you say that right after something really hard, devastating, tragic happens, even though it may be true... People don't want to hear it at that time. That doesn't make it all better. Oh, everything happens for a reason. Chin up. Things will get better. You have to have a little time or water underneath the bridge before you let that happen. Here's one on the list. I don't know. I use it all the time. It's a no-brainer, but it made it on the list. Maybe it's something I need to take out of my vocabulary. Let me know. I love it, but maybe there's a negative side to it. Maybe it's Calling somebody dumb? Yeah, well, I've got all the brains. It's a no-brainer. You have no brains because you don't get it. Maybe there's something there. Or you hear in meetings, well, nobody cares. Well, that person's bringing it up for a reason. They obviously care or thinking about it or it's important to them. There's a reason for them to bring it up. They're talking about it. So that would definitely be one of those. Now, if you look at all of these, it's pretty interesting that... The bottom line, the underlying message that's being sent with most of these, again, some are worse than others. I'll give you that. Some we could probably get away with. But again, these, hey, the scientific source of Reddit, they have to all be right. The underlying message is, hey, you're dumb. It doesn't matter what you think. I don't care about you, your beliefs, or your feelings. It's all about me, so deal with it. Just to kind of non-sugarcoat it. Make it a no-brainer. I'm saying it right there. Just be more aware of these phrases and words that you're using. Remember a lot of verbal packaging that every word you use can attract or repel. They have emotional triggers. They have feelings. You can 
not not be biased with your words. Every word matters, especially in persuasion and influence and saying credit card instead of form of payment, instead of cost, instead of investment. Instead of saying could, you say can. Instead of saying if, you say will. I mean, it matters across the board. So be more aware of that. That's our quasi sort of geeky scholarly article for the week. <laughs> Which brings us to our blunder. Homer? Don't, don't, don't. So this time we used to do the great blunder mistake. And we look at the ninjas too, those great persuasive moments. I love looking at persuasive people. I love being persuaded by persuasive people. They're doing it the right way. A blunder is when you're flying into the radar. They see what's going on. It's pretty cheesy or it has a bad subconscious trigger. The one I saw was the end of a presentation. And it was a conference. I'll have to admit, most of the presenters were not very good. They made the mistake of spending all their time creating their slides versus practicing. And you could tell. Remember my rule that you prepare it 50% of the time and you practice it 50% of the time. If that's your editing. You know, going through it in your mind, no. You go to the event, to the location, you practice it, how you're going to deliver it. That's what makes the difference. Not your weekly meetings. But the time you're up in front of a convention, a conference, you're trying to influence somebody, it's going to make all the difference in the world. You better be practicing because we can tell when you don't. Plus, when you practice, it erodes the fear, the butterflies fly formation. It's much easier. Anyway, at the end of this presentation, they talked about momentum and working together, right? It was a great message. And they had pictures of these, these engine cards, you know, on railroads. They were all tied together, having momentum, working together to pull this big load. Well, I, I love the message, how it worked. The challenge was this picture, these locomotives were spewing the ugliest, darkest pollution, exhaust, smoke, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I would say... Most of the upper part of this graphic, this picture was exhaust, smoke, pollution. It was just nasty. And that's all I could think about. It was a great analogy. It was a great example. But that's the challenge to where we have these pictures that trigger the wrong things. Graphics are good. Graphics increase retention. They simplify ideas. They could be a really good thing. They are more influential. Now, remember, text on a slide is not a graphic. <laughs> it's not a visual aid. They trigger different parts of the brain. Again, perfect persuasive presentations where we go over that. And one I've mentioned before, a couple of these I've mentioned before, I had this picture. I haven't, don't use it anymore because it's basically about this picture of this guy with this huge screw going through him because that's how your prospects feel sometimes. They feel screwed. But that's a term I grew up with, but it's only used probably within North America. Nobody else gets it. I showed that in Italy. They look at me. Why is that guy got a screw going through him? I don't get it. That seems weird. That seems painful. Why is there a screw? And it totally took him off course. My interpreter had explained it to me. That's why now I show my slides to my interpreter before I get there. But that's important to do that research ahead of time. Or another one I used to use, maybe sometimes I use it when I teach in millionaire psychology. It's a picture of this piggy bank. And it's malnourished. It's this really skinny pig. So it's obvious it's a piggy bank, but it's really malnourished. The, the ribs are showing on this pig. <laughs> I think it's funny, but everyone's like, oh, the poor pig. I'm like, it's a piggy bank. Anyway, people feel bad for the pig instead of really getting that the concept is earn what you feel you're worth. If your mindset is too skinny like this pig, you're not making enough money, but that doesn't come across. That is our blunder. Be very careful. Again, you can't get it 100% of the time. It varies by culture, personality. Again, everyone's getting offended now, but try to bounce it off people. Take a look at it. Is there an offensive side to this? Because... I've offended my share of people, and I didn't mean to, and it wasn't even my radar. And some people always default to the worst things, so you either put a disclaimer up front or careful what you say, what you show. That is a huge challenge in presentations. We're out of time this week. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. The special will continue to be your perfect persuasive presentation training for free. You're like, what? Yep, go to presentationiq.com. The link will also be on Maximize Your Influence. Take a 10-question assessment. It helps me with my research, what I'm doing right now. Helps you find out your strengths and maybe some of your weaknesses. And for doing that, I'm going to give you the training. The video training on how to create the perfect persuasive presentation with the templates. Everything you need to know. It's all mapped out. The visual aids. Exactly what to do. That's my gift for you. 
And if you want to really take it to the next level, I also offer some consulting there to help you out to watch your presentations. And so you're not just informing people, you become more influential. So again, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. Again, tell your family, friends, and enemies. Check us out at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. That's also the home of the archives. Especially if you're dealing with price during your close, check out episode 201 through 204 on the psychology of price. So, master these skills. Don't say the dumb things that are causing resistance. Work on it this week. Become more influential. Become a better person. Become happier. Have more success. And go out and persuade with power. 